We started looking at the server in December and we looked at it all the way through January. Uh, almost every single day there were new files turning up on the machine. Uh, the machine had an IP address that's in North Korea, so it was a server that was in North Korea. Uh, and it was kind of like a Dropbox type system. Uh, so these new files were, were turning up. We started looking at the files and almost all of them were to do with animation. Uh, it was different uh, cartoons that were being animated at the time. They were working files. Uh, so some of them would be files with, say, just a single character on them. Some of them would be a succession of files and you could see the character moving and that type of thing. Uh, it, was definitely, uh, it was definitely work that was being done um, to, to produce an animation. Uh, we started looking into the animation files. Uh, some of them had names on them and there were some documents that had names of, of animations. Uh, one was called Invincible, uh, which is uh, already run two seasons on Amazon Prime and a third season is under development and it was the third season that we found the material for. And then also uh, another HBO Max uh, series, a new anime called um, Ianu. Uh, also a few files uh, related to some Japanese animation studios as well. In looking through the files, we found the identities of some of the uh, US animation companies. Uh, I should point out that we didn't find any evidence to suggest that the US animation companies knew they were working with North Korea. There's been a lot of warnings that, that are going out to people, especially in the IT world, who are outsourcing um, or hiring freelancers, um, where it's becoming easier and easier with AI, with um, machine learning, with chat GPT, um, for the people who you're contracting to not actually be the people who you think you're contracting. Um, and it really just uh, goes to show how much due diligence is needed um, in the IT world, especially um, when you're looking for workers. When people think of North Korea, they think it's a very poor country, um, that it's very um, you know, unsophisticated. Uh, but actually, North Korea has had a very strong um, push on uh, science and technology education. Um, and they have um, a lot of actual people who are trained in computer skills. The, the I think, work chain for animation is quite complex and stuff is subcontracted out at multiple levels. And uh, what we suspect happens is that the US animation company was probably working with a Chinese animation company, and that was then subcontracting some work out to someone, and possibly even there were several more layers before it landed with North Korea. Um, a couple of things it shows is that the US government and other governments warn about the danger of inadvertently hiring North Koreans to work on IT projects. Um, that appears to be what we found here. It's something that's incredibly difficult to police because work does get subcontracted and subcontracted and there are all these layers to it. So as the you know, original organization, it's difficult to, to see everybody that's working on one of your projects. Uh, but I think it shows that you know, despite the sanctions, despite all the rules, North Korea is still uh, managing to try to find this work in the world and they're still being successful at it. Yeah, it's very, very difficult for foreign companies to guard against this. Uh, there are all sorts, of, um, all sorts of pieces of advice that the government puts out uh, when you're doing interviews, for example. Uh, do the interview of a video so you can see the person. Uh, get copies of passports and things like that. Make sure that the bank account where you're sending money is in the same name and same country as the person that you interviewed. And uh, that's all good advice and I think it probably stops a lot of this, but it only goes so far. Um, also, these IT workers are very resourceful and every time people figure out one way to stop it, they find a new way to get through. There was a, a case recently um, where someone was being prosecuted because they were being paid to host laptop computers at their home on their home internet connection. Uh, the way the system worked is that the North Koreans overseas could connect to a laptop computer in the US and from there connect to job sites. So from the perspective of the job sites, it looked like it was just a connection from domestic US. So there are all sorts of ways that they try to get around this. It is very, very difficult. Um, companies need to continue their vigilance, uh, but, but also it's, it's something that I don't think we're ever gonna stop.